time for another walk and talk. Yep, I'm going to be doing a lot of these. So I'm going to be uh, concentrating on medical here for a few days. So we did the first one yesterday, and that was just kind of a general overview. Now today, we're going to talk about another aspect of the medical. Yesterday was about putting together a first aid kit. You know, what you're going to need, what you're going to want to put together. We'll get more into detail on that later. Um, this one, we are going to talk about the training okay how to get the knowledge it's one thing to have the equipment but if you don't have the skills it's not going to do you much good so you need to learn as much as you can about what to do in an emergency okay medical emergency and you don't have to you don't have to you know go become a paramedic or anything like that but you can get a lot of really really good basics down. The first basic that I recommend for anyone is CPR. That's a given. You need to know CPR, okay? CPR is a huge lifesaver. That's number one. So go learn CPR. There are courses that you can take online. There's the American Red Cross. There's lots of different sources. They hold free classes in person or you can watch the online videos, all this stuff on YouTube. There's plenty of stuff out there. It's changed a little bit in the past few years because now they do uh, main chest compressions and they don't do quite as much as the uh, heart compressions as they used to. It changed where you place your hand from where they used to. So go check that out. And it's always a good idea to get CPR certified as well. Okay? And they also have ones on AED, Automatic External Defibrillators. These are those little paddle things that shock you back to life or put your heart back into rhythm. Okay, you're gonna want to learn how to use an automatic external defibrillator. They're everywhere now. Okay, you see these little cabinets on the wall that say AED. That's what they are. Okay, they're for people having heart attacks or if they go into heart fibrillation, which is where their heart goes out of rhythm. Okay, starts beating all weird and it's not pumping blood like it's supposed to. Okay, so there are courses on that online that you can take as well. That is a really good one to learn is to learn how to use one of those, okay? Because if you use it improperly and say you're touching the person uh, when it goes off, it can mess your heart up at the same time. It can almost kill you. So you got to know how to use them, okay? And how to use them properly so that you actually save someone's life instead of, you know, further injuring them or even perhaps stopping their heart, okay? And the other thing to learn is basic first aid, okay? You need to learn basic first aid how to treat wounds, how to stop bleeding, okay? And even advanced first aid. Advanced first aid is also important. How to properly put on a tourniquet, all right? How to stabilize someone, look for signs of shock. There's all sorts of things that you need to learn, okay, to do that. So it's, uh, there's lots of online courses. There's plenty that are free. The American Red Cross has lots of good resources for you. They do it for free in a lot of places. So you can take these classes, or you can also take some classes on some of this stuff. You'll pay for them, but they're, they're much more in-depth, and they're really good, and you can get them at, say, like a local community college, okay? That's where I've taken a lot of the stuff that I've learned, is I went down to the local community college and just took a course. And it was, uh, since it's not for credit, it's usually a lot cheaper. I think mine was like a two-credit-hour course, and it was like... 250 bucks, but it was worth it. I learned a huge amount. Okay. Um, another thing to learn, and you can take classes on this, is uh, wound sanitation and also wound management. Okay. How to make sure that someone's wounds don't get infected, how to properly clean it out and treat it to begin with. You know, sanitation methods for doing that so that you're working clean. You're not going to increase the uh, possibility of infection, things like that. What you're going to need to properly maintain a wound so that it heals properly, okay? So there's some training there. And then I also went and took a class on uh, this as well. This is part of the wound management class. And it was on how to give a suture, how to do sutures. Uh, we did it on pig's feet. <laughs> it was neat. Um, they, they just got them from the butcher, and they'd cut them, and then we would practice on pig's feet. Uh, but there is something very important about sutures, okay? If you are going to suture a wound, you need to know how to do it. If you don't, you can hit an artery or a vein or a nerve bundle, okay? You have to know anatomy pretty damn well and know how to give sutures 
to do it properly. Otherwise, you run the risk of actually really hurting someone and also getting them a really nasty infection. And if you don't do it right, they'll end up with a really nasty looking scar when it does heal. So uh, learn that's that, that one you want to take a class on. Okay, that one you really want to take a class on and do some practice as well. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Okay, is go down to a community college or an extension program at a local school. Sometimes they have them. Nursing schools will sometimes do them. Uh, places like that. So go take a class in that if you want to suture a wound. Okay, but there's other ways that you can close up a large wound without suturing. Um, one of them is actually, uh, believe it or not, super glue. But you got to be careful how you use it. Once again, how to do it. Okay, you need training. You need education. Okay, this is all part of the medical. This is the one that a lot of people don't talk about. Okay, it's one that a lot don't talk about. You need to know how to close up a wound or, you know, have the knowledge, okay, to be able to properly do not only first aid, but advanced first aid and other medical necessities that people are going to need, especially in a grid down or SHTF situation. Okay, there's our view again today. It's cleared up a lot. Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Some clouds off in the distance over Pikes Peak. Oh, so nice. Is it going to be even nicer tomorrow? I'm going fishing. Anyway, so that's that kind of knowledge that you need. All right. And of course, you can take some classes, you know, some EMT courses, stuff like that. Emergency medical technician courses um, at local college, community colleges. You know, they're cheaper than universities or anything. They're a good place to go. So, <clears throat> and there's always books. Books, books, books. Your local library has tons of stuff on it. You can go down there, check them out, read up on it. There's a whole damn internet. There's tons of information there. Um, look for stuff, you know, that is good information. Sometimes it can be pretty crappy, and it will lead you to some website to buy something. You know, skip over those. Look for the ones that have the real information, okay? Um, and also, like I said yesterday, look at alternative medicines. And when I say that, I mean stuff like... Uh, the natural pharmacopoeia, all right? Natural medicines, not stuff, not woo, okay? Not that fake medicine stuff um, that is, uh, oh, there's some of it that's, that's decent and there's some that's just complete garbage, okay? You gotta be careful. Look for anything that's been studied, has been done with scientific studies, has actual evidence behind it, has been peer reviewed, scientifically reviewed and published in journals. Okay, so you want to look for good information, not the crap information. Okay, um, so there's there's that stuff as well. So and then the rest of the training um, you can get from other people. You know, there may be other people in a prepper group, or someone you may know is a nurse or nurse practitioner, maybe even a doctor. People like this, you know, ask them. You know, say, hey, I'll buy you dinner. Can you help me out with stuff? You know, so you can learn all about that. And there's a lot to know. There's a huge amount of knowledge. I mean, doctors, they go to uh, seven years of medical school before they're even allowed around a patient to intern. And then they got years of internship before they're actually allowed to practice as an actual doctor. It takes a long time. So learning what to look for in symptoms, looking for uh, certain things that, you know, if someone's going into shock or if they're having an anaphylactic reaction and, you know, they're having a severe allergic reaction that's life-threatening. You know, things like that. Looking for pressure points to block off uh, blood flow to a limb, you know, uh, for severe bleeding. Things like that. How to properly apply a tourniquet. All this information is out there, okay? But the biggest thing is get your training, okay? The training is just essential, if not more essential, than the supplies. Because even if you don't have the supplies, the knowledge may still help. It may help you save someone's life if you're able to improvise something to help them out, okay? That's very important. So, um, but get, get some good information. Get some good information on medical preparations. And once again, knowledge is power, okay? That's a big half of this game. You know, a lot of people are all into, you know, the prepping. You know, they're all into getting all the gear and all the, you know, the fancy stuff and the tactical crap, but they don't know how to use it. You gotta know how to use it. And you gotta practice using it too, okay? Get the training, get the knowledge. That's just as important as the actual physical items themselves. So um, that's about it for now. I will be back with more videos this coming week. So please like, subscribe, please subscribe and hit that like button. Share this video with others. I appreciate it.